Hello, welcome to the Jacksonville Wine Guide. This is actually history in the making, and uh, it's my first ever video review, so congratulations if you're watching this for the first time. I hope it goes okay. Just go easy on me, okay? The um, first wine that I'm actually featuring for my first ever video review is the Chapoutier. Can you see that okay? The uh, Chapoutier Côte de Rhone, uh, Belle Rouge from the uh, southern Rhone region of, uh, of France. 2007 blend. Uh, it's a wine that I know fairly well, tried it quite a few times before, know a bit of the background, so it's a, uh, it's a really good wine to start off with. Okay, so two grapes in the blend. We actually have Grenache and Syrah. Grenache is uh, more of a fruit forward, jammy, kind of raspberry um, style grape, whereas Shiraz, a little bit spicier, heavier, actually quite a bit more spicier, um, heavier, more, uh, more tannin, if you will. Uh, black currant, black pepper uh, kind of flavours to it. Um, Grenache is the dominant grape in the Côte de Rhone region itself, which is in the southern part of the Rhone. And then as you move further north, you'll see the, uh, the actual uh, Syrah grape kind of being more dominant. The uh, actual winemaking in the, the Rhone region has been going on since Roman times. Um, some serious history, obviously, in the Rhone uh, region. Winemaking by Chapoutier, the actual family Chapoutier, has been going on since the 1800s, uh, and now we have two brothers um, actually doing the majority of winemaking, Michel and Marc, so the M in, uh, in Chapoutier, if you can see that. Uh, Michel and Marc Chapoutier. Well, Michel, that's another thing, uh, Michel was actually friends with a, uh, a French uh, singer um, who was actually blind, and if you can see on the label there, uh, you've actually got those little bumps, which those little bumps are actually braille. First ever Braille, uh, Braille wine labels developed by uh, Chapoutier in uh, 1996. So all Chapoutier wines, uh, they often get overlooked, but all the uh, Chapoutier labels actually have Braille um, on the uh, wine labels. There's other wineries that have followed suit now, but um, yeah, Chapoutier were the first. So this will tell you everything about the wine, if you can obviously read Braille. Um, everything about the wine, apart from the taste. Um, tell you the year, tell you the actual winemaking house, in this case Chapoutier, and then the actual uh, region that the wine comes from. So, uh, but yeah, really cool stuff. So the Rhone region. Côte de Rhone is the main wine producing area, district if you will, within the Rhone. Uh, and then the majority of wines produced in the Rhone are actually red wines. So it's a good example to use. Um, you'll see a little bit of white wine produced, um, a lot from the grape called uh, Viognier. Uh, Viognier, really delicious grape, one of my favourite white wines, but uh, you just don't unfortunately see it around uh, too much. And the Viognier grape, interestingly enough, interesting enough, if I can even say it, um, you can actually blend in with your red wines. Um, and French winemakers do this a lot, uh, often with Syrah, which remember this wine was 50% uh, Syrah. Sometimes they can choose to blend that in with their, uh, their red wines, just a little bit to add what they call aromatic complexity. Softens the, uh, the red wines up a little bit, because sometimes Syrah can be way one extreme, just really you know, heavy, vicious uh, red grape. So, so uh, Viognier just softens it up ever so slightly. Now this is a uh, Côte d'Iron wine. Uh, you can actually uh, have a Côte d'Iron village, which you'll often see that around as well. Um, Côte d'Iron village is really arguably a step up in, uh, in quality, step up normally in price as well. Um, but they'll actually put the name of a specific village right after Côte d'Iron here. Uh, and, and what that means is that you're, uh, you're jumping up in quality, you're actually jumping up in the amount of Grenache that's actually allowed to be in the blend. Um, so they have to legally add more Grenache into the blend. And there's a few other like stricter kind of winemaking practices and viticultural you know, practices that you have to, uh, you have to actually do. Okay, so the all-important taste test. Let's uh, let's see what we think of this one. Okay, out of the uh, possibly the biggest bloody wine glass uh, known to man, it's the William Yearwood uh, Crystal wine glass. Terrifies the heck out of me because it's so big and so bloody expensive, but uh, worth every penny, as far as I'm concerned. Let it open up a little bit. I mean, on the nose, personally, almost like a, uh, a cooked raspberry, cooked cherry um, kind of taste to it. A uh, little bit of plum and um, a little bit of a, uh, I guess, kind of licorice, anise um, kind of flavour to it. So far as taste, I mean, those flavours definitely continue. Uh, 
not too dry. It's got plenty of body. I'll, I'll tell uh, I'll, I'll tell you that it's uh, 14.5% alcohol, so it's not overly dry, but there's plenty of body there. 14.5% um, alcohol. I uh, it's kind of you know on the higher um, side. I mean, there's definitely higher alcohol wines out there, but uh, I think it finds a beautiful balance um, between like the uh, the fruit, the uh, the acidity, and uh, and the alcohol. It, uh, it kind of all comes together now. Saying that, personally, I kind of need something with this, I think. Mm. I, uh, yeah, I think I need, uh, I need some meat. I need some meat for this one. Uh, I need some duck, I need some lamb, I need some, maybe roasted chicken. Uh, maybe lamb with a, uh, like a rosemary, um, uh, with rosemary in there somewhere. I need uh, a steak, black cracked pepper, um, maybe even some kind of cherry reduction. Uh, something like that. And that's when I'm explaining European wines to people. I personally always find that um, European wines need to be enjoyed with something. You don't find too many European wines that are uh, uh, kind of easy drinking just by themselves. I, I mean, European wines kind of have that acidity, they have that body, they kind of need something with them. So um, uh, definitely definitely go with uh, meat or game in, uh, you know, in, uh, in some form, even, uh, even cheese, as long as it doesn't overwhelm it too much. So. Okay, so that was the uh, the Chiputier, uh, Belarus Cut the Rhone Red Blend. Uh, average retails around about nine ninety nine, up to about fourteen ninety nine, depending on where you find it, depending on um, case discounts, this kind of thing. I normally, actually, I always recommend you uh, if you're going to buy wine, try and buy a minimum of six bottles at a time, so long as somewhere offers a mixed uh, mixed bottle um, discount. Uh, you can do six bottle discounts, twelve bottle discounts. It normally goes up incrementally from. Uh, from there, so uh, single bottles are, are fine, but you know you are going to end up drinking six, so why not get a better price and just buy uh, and buy six mixed bottles? Uh, and that was the uh, that was the show, my first ever uh, wine video. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any feedback, please let me know. I uh, I'd love to I always love to hear from people. I always respond to uh, Facebook messages, emails, that kind of thing. If you've got a wine that you'd like me to review, please let me know. I'd uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. And also. Uh, Check out the JacksonvilleWineGuide.com and also just JacksonvilleWineGuide.com. It's uh, I own both websites and uh, I keep the events current as uh, as much as possible. I keep every single wine tasting that's any good um, listed on that website. So if you've got an event going on, um, please email it to me. If not, check out some of the best wine tastings in town. So uh, cheers. <laughs>